Hello everybody. My name is Eric D. Johnson. I was on on right. I was on on right. I live right here. I live right here in the city of Memphis. It's in the county city. It's in the state of Tennessee. The day the date is early Monday morning, September the third, two thousand eighteen. The time four thirteen a.m. First thing, thank all my fans, my support for your continued encouragement and support. I'm gonna continue to keep myself employed right here in this Memphis tri-state area. I'm continue. To further my education, Monroe College Online, I'm pursuing my social media study, business administration with a concentration market. At this present time, I've taken a break from going to school. But in the very near future, I will be going back to Monroe College Online. I'm going to continue to pursue my social media study, business administration with a concentration market. Now, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to do my uh, Instagram. <coughs> Hello everybody. My name is Eric D. Johnson. I'm also on Bright Shine. I live right here in the city of Memphis in the county sheriff. It's in the state of Tennessee today. Today is early. Monday morning, September the 3rd, 2018. The time, 4.15 a.m. First day, thank all my fans, my support for your continued encouragement and support. Anti-gang, anti-gang. Now these are just a few of the uh, free logo design websites that you can go to uh, to make anti-gang logos. First of all, I always uh, give thanks to God for all the blessings and the guidance that He provides us all with. And uh, I'm going to continue to uh, complain and speak out about people saying they are uh, gang pluster, mob pluster, people saying they are boss, they are goon, they are thug, people saying they are, uh, they are crook, they are hoodlum, they are mac, they are player, they are. Uh, him, they a whore and you know they a hustler and you know it's all street slang it's all street slang and uh, people all over the earth communicate use language and uh, uh, when I be on my you know I be at work on my job my place of employment people say all that uh, 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 ignorant nonsense and uh, sorority fraternity this is a guarantee it will be anti-gang demonstrations and my anti-gang protests. That's a guarantee. Because first of all, I'm going to stand up for my human rights. First of all, I'm going to stand up for my human rights. That's a guarantee.
This is the International Bill of Human Rights. This is the uh, Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Declaration of the Rights of the Child. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Human Rights Organization, Anti-Slavery International. International Federation for Human Rights. International Conservation Organization, Bird Life International. Fauna and Flora International was the world's first international wildlife conservation organization. Global Environmental Organization, International Union for Conservation of Nature, and also the World Wildlife Fund. Those organizations that we just uh, talked about, um, you know, them organizations such as um, Amnesty International, uh, Human Rights Watch, uh, the World Wildlife uh, Federation Society, uh, you know, uh, Greenpeace, uh, and you know, we can go on and on, but. Uh, the uh, businesses, the uh, uh, companies, corporations, they'll start organizations. They'll start organizations on their own. And they'll fund these organizations. And while everybody's talking about, you know, the climate change and, you know, the ozone layer being depleted and while we talking about issues like uh, 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 air pollution, water pollution, ground pollution, including noise pollution. They'll still be still sitting around uh, violating human rights, uh, not trying to conserve the environment, not trying to conserve wildlife, not trying to conserve nature. That was, that was a lot of these uh, corporations, companies, and businesses, that was they do. So, uh, when it comes to the organization and things like do a background check. Do a background check. Do a background check.
Now, these are <coughs> free logo design website that you can go to and uh, you make anti-gang logos. And sorority fraternity, it will be anti-gang demonstration, anti-gang protest. That's a guarantee. First of all, I'm going to stand up for my human rights. It's a guarantee. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do my Facebook Live, do my Facebook Live. My name is Eric D. Johnson, also on the right side right here in the city of Memphis, in the county of is in the state of Tennessee. The day and date is early September the 3rd, 2018. Time is uh, 4.29 a.m. First day, thank you to all my family and my support for your continued encouragement and support. <laughs>
Anti-gang. Anti-gang. <coughs> now these are just a few of the free logo design website that you can go to uh, to make anti-gang logo. These are some words that uh, I'd like for you to remember. Coercion, coerce, sexual coercion, psychological coercion, psychological manipulation, psychological abuse. to speak out. People saying they're a gang cluster, they're a mob cluster. People saying they're a boss, saying they're a boss, they're a goon, they're a thug. People saying they're a crook, they're a hoodlum. People saying they're a mac, they're a player. People saying they're a pimp, they're a whore, they're a hustler. Whatever, it's, it's all street slang. Ain't no street slang. People all over the earth communicate, use language. And uh, I be in my uh, place of employment, being work on my job. People be saying all that ignorant nonsense. That's what it is—a bunch of ignorant nonsense. Sorority, fraternity—it's a guarantee. It will be anti-gang demonstration, anti-gang protest. First of all, I'm gonna stand up for my human rights. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. state government as well as other governments around the world. They enact laws and those laws are intended to make each and every one of us safe from crime. Now the organized now the United States government passed the Organized Crime Control Act of nineteen seventy and uh Title Nine of the Organized Crime Control Act of nineteen seventy is the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Act, the RICO Act, is anti gang. Also, the Comprehensive Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Act of 1970, the Controlled Substance Act, the Psychotropic Substances Act, the Continuing Criminal Enterprise Statute, Kingpin Statute. It's all anti gang. Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act of 1974 established the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. Now, the uh, related legislation and comprehensive anti gang that's anti gang 
you know, the comprehensive anti-gang initiative officer, juvenile justice links prevention, and the comprehensive gang model officer, juvenile justice links prevention, the Bureau of Justice Assistant Officer of Justice Program, and the United States Department of Justice, the Office of Justice Program, Bureau of Justice Assistant, United States Department of Justice, the comprehensive anti-gang initiative project, safe neighborhoods, the United States Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Service, the comprehensive anti-gang initiative. <coughs> Excuse me. The Office of Juvenile Justice Next Prevention, United States Department of Justice, the Office of Justice Program, Bureau of Justice Assist, the International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, the United States Department of State Institute for Intergovernmental Affairs, Gang Resistant Education and Training, the Great Program, the United States Department of Justice, Office of Justice Program, the Office of Juvenile Justice Next Prevention, October 2009, the National Youth Gang Center, which has been funded by the Office of Juvenile Justice Next Prevention since 1995. Merged with the National Gang Center, which had been funded by the Bureau of Justice Assistance since 2003. The National Gang Center compilation of state laws against gangs. <coughs> sure. Gang prevention and overview of research and program of uh, Mr. James and how the Office of Juvenile Justice links to prevent the United States Department of Justice, Bureau of Justice Assistance, the Office of Juvenile Justice, the links to prevent National Gang Center bulletin. And the title of that bulletin. History of street gangs in the United States. Read the books in the bulletin. And also, you can find that same information on Wikipedia titled Gangs in the United States. Now, the uh, United States Department of Justice Office of the United States Attorney Manual 1457 Criminal Street Gang Statute, 18 United States Code 521. The United States Department of Justice Federal Bureau of Investigation National Gang Intelligence Center. The United States Department of Justice Organized Crime and Gang Section. And there are other federal, state, and local agencies. The United States Department of Justice Office of Justice Program National Institute of Justice Anti-Gang Strategies. Prevention, Intervention, Assessment, and Suppression. The United States Department of Justice Office of Justice Program National Institute of Justice. The United States Department of Health and Human Services Center for the Disease Control and Prevention, National Center for Injury Prevention and Control, Change in Course, Preventing Gang Membership and also Strive, Striving to Reduce Youth Violence Everywhere. The United States Department of Justice, United States Department of Education, the United States Department of Health and Human Services, United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, United States Department of Labor, and the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy. The National Forum on Youth Violence Prevention Forum you can go to youth.gov and be informed about the National Forum Youth Violence Prevention as well as the Comprehensive Anti-Gang Initiative and the Comprehensive Gang Model. The United States Department of Justice Bureau of Justice Assistance, National Crime Prevention Council, keeping kids out of gangs. And uh, also anti-hazing. You can go to lawyers.com and be informed about anti-hazing. This is the International Bill of Human Rights. This is the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. This is the, the Declaration of the Rights of the Child. And this is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child.
This is the world's oldest human rights organization, Anti-Slavery International. This is the International Federation for Human Rights. International Conservation Organization, Bird Life International. This is Fauna and Flora International, with the world's first international wildlife conservation organization. This is the world's oldest global environmental organization, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, as well as uh, the World Wildlife Fund. organizations like the organization we just uh, talked about, uh, Amnesty International, for example, Human Rights Watch, uh, Greenpeace, uh, the World Wildlife Society, you know, there are many organizations. Now, you know, the businesses, companies, corporations, they'll start organizations. Yeah, they, they do it all the time. They start organizations. See, they're not trying to respect human rights. They're not trying to, uh, you know, issues like the ozone layer, uh, air pollution, water pollution, ground pollution. These businesses, corporations, companies, they violating human rights. They the ones who are uh, polluting the air, the water, the ground. They the reason why the ozone layer is uh, depleted. And they not interested in uh, doing anything. The only thing they're interested in is the bottom line. Making a profit. Making money. That's all they're they concerned about. So, do a background check. Do a background check. Do a background check. <laughs> Thorough, thorough, because you, they'll, they'll try to clean up all, all can, you know, do a background check. Now, uh, we can, can we get ready to go to the Bible. Let me uh, get my books ready. Huh? As you know, we are, like I said, we get ready to go to the Bible. And um, we've been going to Wikipedia. We've been going to Wikipedia, the quick reference, quick reference. Um, and we've been uh, reading about the Catholic Church 
the history of the Catholic Church and uh, in all their particular churches, you know, all, of, all the particular churches of the, of the Catholic Church. Now we know that uh, we scroll down, when we scroll down on Wikipedia, you know, to the name Catholic Church. We know Catholic is Greek and uh, mean universal. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we know that this person uh, was the name of uh, St. Ignatius of Antioch. Now we know, you know we, we read about him on and on uh, Wikipedia as well. And and uh, he wrote a letter. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, he wrote a letter. And in his letter he wrote a letter to the Smyrnaeans. And in his letter, he wrote the phrase, Catholic Church. He wrote the phrase, Catholic Church. Now, uh, it was around 107, 110 AD. And after he wrote this letter, St. Ignatius of Antioch, He was uh, eaten by lions <laughs> in the Roman Colosseum. He was eaten by lions in, in the Roman Colosseum. So. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. And we also on Wikipedia. Uh, read about the Protestant Reformation. Now we know uh, who the Protestants were. They were Catholics. We know the Protestants, they were Catholics. Now the Protestant Reformation, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, the 95 Thesis, and, you know, uh, 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 all the major, minor, and related churches of the uh, uh, Protestant Reformation. You know, we didn't read it, so, uh, you know, and uh, the American Restoration Movement and, you know, uh, taking words out of the Bible, taking words out of the Bible, and, and uh, uh, all these groups, you know, the Morris Science Temple, you know, United States government, the Justice Department, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They have a file on these groups. The Morris Science Temple, the Nation of Islam, the 5% Nation, all these various black Hebrew Israelites, and uh, the Rastafarians, and uh, you know, any other group. And uh, get as much information as you can. Other governments have information. Get as much information as you can. Nobody wants to leave these people walking around trying to influence other people to join them and listen to them. Because they I don't know what they're talking about, they're lying. You know. You know. But get all, get as much help. Uh, what's his name? Uh, W.D. Farmer Hunter, for example. Get as much information as you can. Find out, you know, get as much information as you can. And, uh, Now, like I said, we're going to uh, read the Bible. We're going to the Bible. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse <coughs> me. And we're going to continue to uh, expose Saul from Tarsus, the self proclaimed Apostle Paul. Now, we're going to the United Nations, the church. The church, the one and only church that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, established. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19, as well as 
Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 through 20. The church. There's only one church. There's only one church. All this other man-made stuff is just a made-up junk. They lies. And uh, 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 what's his name? Saul from Tarsus. The self-proclaimed apostle Paul. He's a liar. He's a murderer. He called himself an apostle. He's a liar. He lied. He is not. He never was no apostle. He was converted. He was converted. Nobody else. No. He was converted. Acts chapter 9. The title of Acts chapter 9. Saul converted. He was converted by Jesus Christ. He was persecuting the church. See, he, he, he didn't, he didn't uh, convert on his own. He had to be converted by Jesus Christ because he was persecuting the church. The important thing, the important point to make is this. Yes, he was converted. All the wrong that he done before he was converted. And think about all the wrong that he did after he was converted. He was baptized after, you know, Jesus Christ sent Ananias to lay hands on him. You know, because he was blind for three days, laying up at this man's house. And uh, Ananias came because Ananias received a vision from Jesus Christ. And so Saul was baptized. That's the outward showing. But see, inside, he didn't repent. See, he didn't repent. He's still doing wrong. See, that's the key point that you always point out to these people that try to defend Saul is yes, first of all, yes, he was converted by Jesus Christ. See, you, you try to make it sound like he voluntarily converted. He was he was converted by Jesus. He was on the road to Damascus, still trying to persecute the followers of Jesus Christ, the disciples of the Lord. Jesus Christ told him, you don't persecute me. You you persecuting the church. You persecute me. You persecute me, Saul. And you don't persecute me. Jesus Christ stopped him. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, stopped him from persecuting the church. And as you said, as it says in Acts chapter nine, verse 30, 31, it says that after the persecution. The church multiplied and grow in, in, in Judea, Galilee, Samaria. The church had rest from persecution. Cause he was because Saul, uh, we finna go, we finna read. But we uh, but Saul was persecuting the church. Then after he was persecuted, he was doing all this bold preaching and and uh, he left Damascus. Went to Jerusalem, met the apostles. You know what I'm saying? And then he was going in and out in Jerusalem with the disciples. Then he was arguing with the Grecians. So the brothers had to send him to Caesarea. And from Caesarea, he got sent to Tarsus. That's where he's from. There's no church in Tarsus. After, after Saul had been sent to Tarsus, the church did not grow. The church did not multiply. Saul was lying. See, this is the point that you point out to people who want to defend Saul. Is that when he went to Tarsus, there's no church in Tarsus. The church did not multiply. The church did not grow. He's a lying murderer. He's a lying murderer. So let's go to the Bible. And we're going to continue to expose Saul from Tarsus, the self-proclaimed apostle Paul, for being a lying murderer. And we're going to also expose this criminal street organization that's in the Bible. We started reading about it. And we're going to continue to expose them 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days out of the year. We're going to the United Nations. And, uh, the church, the disciples.
mean it. When we go to the to the uh, to the United Nations, it's gonna be criminal charges and civil charges against the Catholic Church, all these Protestant Reformation churches, all this American Restoration Movement, and all them groups. Criminal charges, civil charges. Let's go to the Bible. We're going to first. We're going to uh, go to Acts chapter one, and we're going to start reading. Now all the man-made religious organizations, they use uh, Saul's, uh, uh, all them lies he wrote in them epistles. They all lies. He was lying. Talking about he an apostle. One of the, one of the uh, scriptures that they use, that the man-made religious organizations use, is Romans chapter 16, verse 16. Salute one another with the holy kiss, the church, with the suffix es, churches. Of Christ salute you. That's a lie. That's a Scripture that the man made religious organization used is 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. So to be I say of glory in you in the church with the suffix ES churches of God for your patient faith and all your persecuting tribulation that ye endure. Let's turn to the Bible. Go to Acts chapter 1. Chapter 1, we'll start reading in verse number 1. The former treaty that have I made, O Theophilus, and also, also, everybody that's watching, everybody that's watching, uh, you can follow along uh, BibleStudyTool.com and also uh, BibleGateway.com. You can follow along. Now, we in Acts chapter 1, start reading in chapter, uh, verse number 1. The former treatises have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after that he threw the Holy Ghost, and given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many found for proof, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith He, Ye have heard of me. <coughs> for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received them out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, what stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, the Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, whereby both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphys, and Simon, Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. 
These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplicating with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about a hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, was a guide to them that took Jesus. For it was numbered with us and they obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. And following his law, he burst asunder in the midst of all his vows gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers in Jerusalem, so much that their field is called in their proper tongue a sediment. That is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms that his habitation be destined, let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Wherefore, these men, which have company with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Read that one more time. Beginning from the baptism of John to that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thy Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, shew whether these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lot, and the lot fell upon Matthias. And he was numbered with eleven apostles. Only one, only one, there's only 12 apostles, only 12. All you people that's trying to defend Saul, there are only 12 apostles. He's a lying murderer. You don't call yourself no apostle. He's a lying murderer, only one. There are only 12 apostles. Now, the church, like I said, like we said, been going over the church. Uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, established the church. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. And also, Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Now, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, saying disciple, that's singular, meaning one. Disciples. It's plural, meaning more than one. Uh, the four Gospels. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now the Acts of the Apostles, the book of Acts, disciple, singular, meaning one, disciples, plural, meaning more than one.
talking about, uh, like I said, there's only 12 apostles. There are only 12 apostles. Only 12. Now, the second epistle of Peter, from the apostle Peter, chapter 3, verse 2. That ye may be mindful of the words which, my, which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Satan. of Jude, you know, Jude was one of the, he was an apostle. Chapter 1, verse 17. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. of Jesus Christ chapter 2 verse 2 I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars of Jesus Christ chapter 18 verse 20 rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for God hath avenged you on her of Jesus Christ chapter 21 verse 14 and the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb Saint Ignatius, the one who got ate by the lions at um in the in the Roman Colosseum wrote that letter to the to the Smyrnaeans in uh, around 107, 107, 110 AD. Uh, in his letter, he wrote the phrase Catholic Church. Uh, now we know Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was crucified around 30, 33 AD. You know, we went to Wikipedia. With the weak wing, the quick reference. So, uh, so 
we know that's about 77 years. So we know that the church, the disciples, disciple, disciples, 77 years. They were, they were still walking around. So let's, let's continue our reading now. Let's turn over to uh, Acts chapter 6. You know, we, uh, we're going to continue to expose Saul as well as you know, Saul the self-proclaimed Apostle Paul, Saul from Tarsus, self-proclaimed Apostle Paul. We're going to continue to expose them 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days out of the year, as well as the criminal street organization that he was a part of that we're reading about in the Bible. So let's, let's turn it to uh, Acts chapter 6. And this is how the controversy, you know, the, uh, uh, the controversy with Stephen got started. Acts chapter 6. I'm going to start verse number 1. I'm going to start because, you know, we are uh, starting we, we, we are the uh, controversy with, uh, with Stephen. So, I'm going to start reading in verse number 1. And in those days, chapter 6, Acts chapter 6, verse number 1. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the day of ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of other disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they said before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain other synagogues, which were called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputed with Stephen. And they went, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then a suburban men, we said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses. We said, this man seeks not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the custom which Moses delivered us. And all that said in the council, looking steadfast on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. So that's, that's how the controversy with Stephen got started. Now we all in Acts chapter 7. And uh, Acts chapter 7, uh, Stephen gives his defense. <clears throat> now we over Acts chapter 7 I'm going to start reading uh, verse 54 verse 54 when they heard these things they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth but he being full of the Holy Ghost looking looked up steadfastly into heaven 
and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. <coughs> and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast them out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had, and when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now we over in Acts chapter 8. <coughs> We're going to start reading verse number 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him as for Saul he made havoc of the church enter into every house and here the men and women committed them to prison therefore they that were, that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word read that again Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Now we know that there's a serious uh, thing to uh, read about. Now we don't know all the people who was uh, involved with the persecution and with, with, with the uh, 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 martyrdom, uh, with the martyrdom of Stephen. We identify one, uh, Saul from Tarsus, the self-proclaimed Apostle Paul. We know he was one of them. Now the rest of them, we, we, don't, we, we can't identify who were involved in persecuting the church. We know that men, women, and children were killed, murdered. It's a disgusting, despicable thing to, to have done. Saul is a murderer. He's a liar and he's a murderer. First of all, don't forget he said he was a Jew. We're going to go. We're going back. We went over part of it yesterday. The children of Israel had a covenant with God. See? This is how serious it is. Not the Jews. The children of Israel. So we, on that point, he's a liar. He's a liar. Now, we know that this is a very disgusting, despicable thing to read about. Men, women, and children little boys being killed taken into slavery little girls being killed being kidnapped being impregnated by these these crazy people and then they take the children then they take the child. They could kill that. They could kill that girl, and then just kept the child and use the child. You know to tell all them lies to that little child, and then raise that little child. See, that was one of the things that people did in the past. They allowed the children. Then these children be raised. That's read by God in the Old Testament. Told the children of Israel. Not to listen to these people. Because they, they were lying about God. 
They were lying. Okay, so that's chapter 8. Let's turn over. Now, you know, Acts chapter 8, uh, the disciples had to deal with Simon the sorcerer. The apostle had to deal with Simon the sorcerer. And, uh, and also uh, the apostle Philip in the, in the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. Now, we over in Acts chapter 9. The title of Acts chapter 9, everybody, Saul converted. Acts chapter 9. We'll start reading the verse number one. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. Jesus Christ intervened. Jesus Christ intervened and stopped Saul from Tarsus, the self-proclaimed apostle Paul, from persecuting the church. And he trembled in the stun and said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Verse number 7. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, Hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Read that verse again. Verse number seven. And the men which journeyed with him, they stood speechless, hearing a voice. Hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So these men that traveled, they journeyed with Saul. They stood speechless. They heard the voice of Jesus Christ, but they didn't see no man. So they heard a man's voice, but they didn't see no man. They stood speechless. See, these are these are the things that you have to point out to the people who want to defend Saul. How the light shine around by him. And how Jesus Christ was talking directly to him. And then these men who journeyed with him, they stood speechless. But they was hearing a voice. But they didn't see no man. So they was hearing a man talking to Saul. But they didn't see no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the, by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in the vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed and have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints in Jerusalem. And there he have authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings of the children of Israel. 
for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered to the house and put his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thy camels have sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes and there had been scales, and he received sight, went with and arose, and was baptized. He was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem? And came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus. Prove it that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying awake was known to Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by, took him by night, and led him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at the mass in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. Read that again. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. So now you're in Jerusalem now you he was in Damascus he was with the disciples in Damascus so he knows some people you know if you if you be around you know uh, I know you you know me because we was in Damascus I was with the disciples in Damascus now he's in Jerusalem he then met the apostles he met the apostles now Barnabas one of the disciples he know him personally. He he, he you know he, he went to the apostles on his behalf. Barnabas went to the apostles, brought him in front of the apostles. Barnabas brought Saul in front of the apostles and told the apostles how he had, he was in Damascus with the disciples, preaching boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. So now, now he in Jerusalem. He going in and out with the disciples. Verse 29. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see what he's doing? Just like when he was in, in, in Damascus after he was baptized. He spoke boldly. He's speaking boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. and disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to slay him. You know he's crazy. He really is crazy. You know he already lied, murdering himself. And now he's sitting around talking about Jesus and, and, and speaking bold in the name of Jesus and then he's over here arguing with people. He is crazy. To slay him. So verse number 30. Which when the brethren knew. They brought him down to Caesarea. So now he has left Jerusalem. And has come down to Caesarea. And sent him forth. To Tarsus. So now he has been sent from Caesarea. By the brethren. To Tarsus. Now he is from Tarsus. There's no church in Tarsus. Now he did all that bold preaching in Damascus, Syria. He did all that bold preaching in Jerusalem. 
he has been sent from Caesarea to Tarsus. All you people that want to defend Saul, he has been sent from Caesarea to Tarsus. There's no church in Tarsus. There's no disciple singular. There are no disciples plural. He was converted. The title of Acts chapter 9, Saul converted. That's the title, Acts chapter 9, Saul converted. So this is the same Saul that everybody wanted to defend, telling everybody he was converted by Jesus Christ. He has been sent from Caesarea to Tarsus. There's no church in Tarsus. There's no church in Tarsus. The church is not growing. The church is not multiplying. Verse 31. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and in Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. All you people that want to defend Saul. See the church is multiplying in Judea, Galilee, Samaria, throughout the region. However, over there in Tarsus, the person who was converted by Jesus Christ, the church is not multiplying. The church is not growing. There's not one single disciple except except Saul he by himself. Verse 32. And it came to pass as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints with dwell and love. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ make thee whole arise and make the and make thy bed. And he arose immediately, and all that dwelt and little and Sarah saw him and turned to the Lord. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This one was full of good works and arms deed when she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had watched, they laid her in the upper chamber, and for as much as little was not a job. And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter rose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him unto the, into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and shewing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one, Simon, and Tanner. So now over Acts chapter 10, the title of Acts chapter 10 is Peter's Vision. <coughs> Excuse me. It's uh, titled Peter's Vision, Acts chapter 10. We know that Saul from Tarsus, the self-proclaimed possible, he's still over there in Tarsus. Nobody's hearing from him. The church is not multiplying. He been converted. Saul has been converted, so the church not multiplying in Tarsus. Now we're gonna turn over to Acts chapter eleven. And we're gonna start reading verse number one. 
and the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were other servants in contended with him, saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel to sin, as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened my eyes, I considered and saw full for the beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the earth. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise. Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, they call not thou come. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was, where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubted. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house. Which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. Then remember I, the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the light gift, as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I, that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then have God also to the Gentile granted repentance unto life. Now they which were scattered abroad, Upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then titles of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Verse 23 Who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all they were purpose of heart. They were cleave unto the Lord. Read that again. Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all. They were purpose of heart. They were cleave unto the Lord. So now Barnabas has been sent to Antioch by the church in Jerusalem. And when he came to Jerusalem, when he came to Antioch. He had seen the grace of God, was glad, and exhorted them all. You ain't heard nobody say nothing about being no Christian. Nobody said anything. You don't hear nothing. You don't hear nobody saying Christian. Nobody said Barnabas has been sent from Jerusalem to Antioch. And when he came to Antioch, he seen the grace of God. And was glad and exhorted them all. 
They were purpose of heart. They would cleave unto the Lord. Nobody said anything about being a Christian. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. So now Barnabas is leaving Antioch to go to Tarsus to seek Saul. Now we still know we've got to get the mathematical formula because during the first century, you know, to, to uh, calculate time and distance and by ship and so on and so forth. But in the meantime, you know, uh, this person over there, Saul from Tarsus, the self-proclaimed apostle Paul, the church is not multiplying. They have not heard from Saul. He has not been keeping in contact with the church. So now Barnabas is traveling from Antioch to Tarsus to seek Saul. And then when he seeks Saul, we don't even know how long that took. That's, that's uh, not a good thing for all you people that want to defend Saul. Barnabas is a good man full of faith. Much people were added to the church because of Barnabas. Now you got to go over here. You got to leave Antioch and go to Tarsus to seek Saul who has not been keeping in contact with the, with the apostles or the elders of the church in Jerusalem. The church is not multiplying in Tarsus. Now, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. We don't know where he found him. We don't know where Barnabas found Saul. He could have been found out in the woods laying on the beach somewhere in the alley we don't, we don't know where we don't know where Barnabas found Saul but when he did find we don't know how long it took we don't know the Bible said the script said when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. How you gonna leave Antioch? The church is not even multiplying in in Tarsus. And then you're gonna leave Tarsus and then you're gonna come over to Antioch and now you're over here with the disciples and now you want to help teach the people in Antioch. You're a lying murderer. This is the same Saul from Tarsus, the self proclaimed apostle Paul who was converted by Jesus Christ. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. We know who did. It was Saul. It was Saul. Now, look at what you're hearing. Way over there in Antioch. Christian. That's an insult. It's an offense, it's wrong, it's persecution. It was Saul. Verse 27. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them 
named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dirt throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciple, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So what we're going to do now, we're going to turn over to Acts chapter 15. <coughs> so we know that Acts chapter 11, verse 26, that's the first place that you find this word Christian. Now we know the second place in the Bible that you find this word Christian is in uh, Acts chapter 26, verse 28. King of Ripple almost was ready to be a Christian. We, we know that's a lie. It's a lie. It's persecution. It's a lie. And uh, the third place that you find this word Christian is in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 16. That's the Apostle Peter. First Peter. Apostle Peter. Uh, verse chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. You know that that's not right. For a person to, to be calling yourself a Christian, that's not right. Jesus Christ said, disciple, disciples, the church. You know that's not right. It's a lie. It's persecution. Jesus Christ, in his word, said, disciple, disciples. It's a lie. That's persecution. That's that criminal street organization doing that stuff. They going, now, now you're going behind. Uh, the apostles back behind the elders in Jerusalem the church back saying all this stuff talking about some Christian if any man suffer as a Christian any man suffer as a Christian let him not be ashamed people going around lying we glorify God we glorify God because the people who, who did that, they don't worship God. They're not worshiping God. They don't worship God. And then over in uh, 2 Peter, uh, the Apostle Peter exposed and solved from Tarsus, the self proclaimed Apostle Paul. Exposed them in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 15, 16, 17, and 18, specifically identifies Saul from Tarsus writing them epistles. You know that's wrong. This is the Apostle Peter, 2 Peter. How you going to write epistles and then in the epistle you're going to call yourself an apostle? How could you do that? Don't you don't you see the wrong that he is doing? This is Second Peter, the Apostle Peter. This is his epistle. And in the Apostle Peter's epistle, he identifies Saul from Tarsus. And telling him that you in these epistles that you wrote, he called himself an apostle. And the Apostle Peter reading it. How could you? How you gonna defend Saul? The Apostle Peter in Second Peter identifying Saul, writing those epistles, and in those epistles he gonna call himself an apostle. You can't defend Saul. He's a lying murderer.
Now let's go over to Acts chapter 15. chapter 15 we're going to start reading the verse number 1 and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said except you be circumcised after the man of Moses you cannot be saved when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question that was the start of the end of that Christian stuff. That was the start of the end. When you and in that verse it said, when there, there when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissent and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem until the apostles and elders about this question. So not only are they going to go to, to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about the circumcision, but also their Christian stuff. Certain other of them. being brought on their way by the church they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria declaring the conversion of the Gentiles and they called great joy unto all the brethren and when they were come to Jerusalem they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders and they declared all things that God had done with them but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputed, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which know the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. <coughs> sure. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we should be saved even as they. Then all the multitude kept silent and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Me and the brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon had declared how God at the first day visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, and to disagree the words of the prophets, as it is written. After this I will return, and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called save the Lord who do of all these things known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world wherefore my sentences that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God 
but then we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood for most of old time have been every city of them they preach them being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day then please did the apostles and the elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own coming to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas namely Judas surnamed Barnabas and Silas chief men among the brethren that was the end of that Christian stuff that was the end of it right then and there them after this manner the apostles and elders and brethren sent greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles and Antioch and Syria and Cilicia Cilicia now the reason why you're hearing about the brethren in Cilicia Tarsus is in Cilicia is because of Barnabas because of Barnabas all these people that want to defend Saul See in Acts chapter 15, now you're hearing about Cilicia. This was after Barnabas had to go, had to depart from Antioch to Tarsus to seek Saul. While he while Saul was over there in Tarsus, the church was not multiplying. There was nobody when 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 when, when Barnabas arrived in Tarsus. There was no church to greet him and to meet him. There was no church. Now, after Barnabas finally found Saul in Tarsus, now you're hearing the brethren in Cilicia. Saul from Tarsus, the sample claim possible, he's a lying murderer. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, You must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such command. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that ye abstain from meats, offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strange, and from fornication, from which if ye you keep yourself, ye you should do well, fare you well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had heard, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle. Which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words, and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there in space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mar, but Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went by and went not with them to the work. That's over in uh, Acts chapter 13, 
verse 13 when John Mark went back to Jerusalem and we know that that was John Mark he went back to Jerusalem and reported uh, to the apostles and the elders in the church what had been done over there in Antioch with that Christian stuff and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed the son of one from the other and some Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus and Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God and it went through Syria and Cilicia confirmed the churches now let's turn over to Acts chapter uh, 22 Now you remember we uh we've been talking about how how Saul from Tarsus be gesturing at the people, just like in Acts chapter twenty one, when uh, he was taken into custody and he was standing on the stairs and he beckoned to the to the crowd with his hands, you know, because he wanted to speak to the people. And uh, he be gesturing with his hands. See, that's that criminal street organization stuff. See? So now over in Acts chapter 22. In the title of Acts chapter 22. Paul tells of his conversion. He lies. Paul lies about his conversion. Now. Uh, being specific. Verse number 9. Acts chapter 22. Verse number 9. And they that were with me saw indeed the light. And were afraid. But they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. He lied. He lied. He's saying that. See Saul saying that the men. They saw the light. And they was afraid. But they heard not the voice. But him that spake to me, he lied. He lied. He's a lying murderer. And also in Acts chapter 22, you remember, he never did tell anybody that he was a, a disciple. You know, when he lied, you know, he tells about how he was converted and all that. And, uh, about he lied about his conversion. He lied about the men, so you know he lied about everything else. Talking about he was in a trance and all, and he was lying. chapter 22 Saul told the centurion that he was a Roman so let's go over to Acts chapter uh, 26 he lied again chapter 26 
Okay, now we over in uh, Acts. I'm going to make sure we over in Acts chapter 25. And, um, you know, Paul went before Festus. That's what I was making sure. Uh, you remember how uh, Festus wanted to do a favor for the Jews. You know, they, they wanted to kill him. But we had, we had to always remember, see, you don't, you don't let Paul and these Jews fool you. See, that's what we're trying to get people to see, that this, this Jew stuff is a criminal street organization. And that over in Acts chapter 25, you can see it. Uh, Start, I'm going to show you in verse number 2 Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed them against Paul and Paul and desired favor against him that he would send, send for him to Jerusalem laying wait in a way to kill him but Festus answered that Paul should be kept in Caesarea and that he himself would, would depart shortly that let him let them therefore say he which among you are able go down with me and accuse this man if there be any wickedness in him. And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down unto Caesarea and the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, commanded Paul to be brought. And he was come, and when he was come, the Jew which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul which they could not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I, have I offended anything at all. But Festus went to do the Jews a pleasure. Answered Paul and said, Will thou go up to Jerusalem and there be judged for these things before? Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat. Where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong, as thou very well knowest. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to go to uh, Jerusalem. He didn't want to go. But remember, the apostles, the elders, and the church in Jerusalem. The apostles, elders, and the church in Jerusalem. Now turn over to Acts chapter 26. <clears throat> now in Acts chapter 26, the title of uh, Paul recounts his conversion. He lied again. Verses 13, 14, and 15, he lied again. He lied again. Now, Now you know the first place that you find the word Jew is in Esther in the Old Testament in the book of Esther uh, chapter 2 verse 5 in the first place you find the word Jews is in the Old Testament 2 Kings uh, chapter 16 verse number 6 now Now we're going to go to the Old Testament and we're going to you know all this stuff about the Jews and all that. So let's turn to the book of Genesis. Turn to the book of Genesis. Now we know about the children. Now we know the uh, the uh, the heritage of you know Jew basically uh, Abram, whose name was changed to Abraham, and Sarah, whose name was changed to Sarah by God. By God. Now uh, they had a, a handmaid, uh, Hagar, the Egyptian, and Abraham got her pregnant and had a child, a son, named him Ishmael. And uh, later on, Sarah, she got pregnant. 
and she had a son, you know, Abraham and Sarah. They had a son named Isaac. Then Isaac and uh, Rebecca. Isaac and Rebecca. Son, where they had twins, twins, Esau and uh, Jacob. And uh, God's covenant uh, was with uh, Jacob. You know, Jacob had children, Rachel. And uh, So uh, Jacob had twelve, you know, Jacob had twelve children. Rachel, his wife, and then you know the handmaids and all this. But he had twelve, so that's the children of Israel. You know, Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel by God. His name was changed to, from Jacob to Israel. So the children of Israel. Children, uh, one of uh, Jacob's uh, son Joseph, the other brother sold him into slavery. You know the story. In in Egypt, so Joseph was uh, raised in Egypt. Get to the end of, uh, of the book of uh, Genesis, and we know Joseph. You know he eventually dies. You know he wanted the sons of, uh, of, of of Jacob. He wanted Jacob's sons. So we get to the first chapter of Exodus, chapter one. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt, every man in his house. Whole came from came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, and all the soul that came out of the loins of Jacob, was seventy sold, for Joseph was in Egypt already, including Joseph. So that's twelve. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, all that generation, and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly and mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mighty than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they are followed out in the war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python, and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rivers. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. 
in mortar and in brick, and all manner of service in the field, and all their service where they made them serve was with, was with with was with rigor. And the king even spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shiphrah, and the name of the other Pue. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them, and, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then shall then ye sh then she shall live. But the midwives fear God, and did not as the king of Israel command them, but save the men children alive. What time is it? Yeah, let's see. And the king of Israel called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing? They have saved the men children alive. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered. Earl, the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives and the people, multiplied and waxed very, very mighty. <coughs> And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people saying, Every son that is born, he should cast into the river. And every daughter, he should save alive. So that's, that's the children of Israel. That's the children of Israel, not no Jews. The children of Israel. Now, uh, I'm going to turn over here to Numbers chapter 25. chapter 25 the reason why we know that God told the children of Israel not to turn to other gods see this is where they, all that criminal street organization come from this is where it come from now we are in, in, in Numbers chapter 25 I'm going to read verse number 1 and Israel abode and shit them and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. See? And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined themselves unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judge of Israel, Slay ye every one of, of his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Pentecost, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through. The man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. <coughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Pinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, have turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. So, when it comes to that, 
that uh, criminal street organization stuff. See, this is what God tell you. See, people be lying about God. See, many people in doing it, you ain't know about God. You heard a word, people use language, but you ain't know what the children of Israel knew. See, that's the difference. See, you didn't you you didn't receive teachings from God as the children of Israel have received teaching about God. And see, this is what causes the problem with this criminal street organization nonsense is that you are deceived yourself, first of all. You deceive, and then you go around trying to deceive others. That's what that means. These people were deceived. The Moabs and the Hittites, the Hittites and all of them, they were, they were deceived. And then they go around deceiving others. Now let's turn over here to uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Start reading the verse number 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Gergesites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mighty than thou. and deliver them before thee thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them thou, thou shalt make no covenant with them nor shoot mercy unto them neither shalt thou make marriages with them thou daughter thou shalt not give unto his son nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son for they will turn away thy son from following me that they may serve other gods so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people. Unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, and the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So, that's the reason why all that criminal street organization be wrong. See, you, you, you be deceived about God and then you try to deceive others about God. Now let's turn over here to Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse number 1 Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse number 1 if there arise among you a prophet or a dream of dreams and give thee a sign or one and the sign of the one to come to battle, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dream of dream, for the Lord your God proved you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep it his
and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn your way from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk walk in so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee if thy brother thy son thy daughter thy mother or thy son or thy daughter or thy wife or thy bosom or thy friend which is in thy own soul entice thee secretly saying let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known thou nor thy father name the other gods of the people which are around you nigh unto thee and far off from thee from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him Neither shall thou eye pity him, neither shall thou spare him, neither shall thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thy hand shall be first upon him to bring him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stone that he die, because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So, God telling you, don't listen to these people that be lying. He was talking to the children of Israel, but see, it also applies all that criminal street orders say, that be why all that Jew stuff be wrong. It was the children of Israel. See, you going you starting to see. Nobody saying nothing about being no Jew or the Jews. All these different people, the Jebusite, Hittite, Hittites, that's what they were. They were calling themselves the Hittites, the Hittites, the Jebusites. Over the period of time, them same people. That's where that Jew stuff came from. That's where it came from. From the Hittites, Hittites, Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Moabites, the Midianites. That's where it came from. It was them. And see, the children of Israel were supposed to be intermarrying with them, taking wives and sons. But that's what happened. So now let's go over to uh, Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2. And the angel of the Lord came, came up from Gigal to Bucham and said, I made you go out of Egypt. And I brought you into the land which I swear unto your father. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Like I said, we're in Judges chapter 2. Start reading at verse number 11. And the children of Israel did even in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, other gods of the people. Other, other gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and they delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Okay, 
แล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื่นเดี๋ยวสุราแล้วก็ตื
book, we're going to read first to the title of African Religion and Philosophy read by Dr. John S.M.B. Another book we're going to read first to the title of Concept of God and Africa read by Dr. John S.M.B. Examples of schools in South Saharan Africa that teach African traditional religion. <laughs> Dr. Joseph Omasay Waleo, PhD, Abaday, Senior Lecturer, African Traditional Religion Department of Religious Studies, University of Abaday, Abaday, Nigeria. Dr. P. Aluma de Pemo, Ph.D. Abaday, Department of Religious Studies, University of Alamein, Alamein, Nigeria. <laughs> Dr. E. Beloja Adobo, Professor of Religious Studies, University of Abaday, Nigeria. John S.M.B. was born in Kenya and he studied at McAreary University College in Uganda. Now you know the uh, prefixes and suffixes, the root words, they in Webster's Third New International Dictionary and uh, Oxford English Dictionary.
the complete now Webster's third new international dictionary the complete and total definition meaning of the word gain the act manner or means of going mm -hmm. Stupid sorority, this stupid fraternity sister.
Oxford English Dictionary the complete internal definition of meaning of the word gang. Action or mode of going away, passing, instead of things or person. This is mobile and mob. Stupid Soror and that stupid fraternity. These are the free logo design website that you can go to and make anti-gang logo. And get ready to end the day of video. Again, my name is Eric D. Johnson. Also known by I live right here in the city of Memphis, it's in the county sheriff, it's in the state of Tennessee. Thank all my family, my support for your continued encouragement and support. I always put God first. I know today is Labor Day here in the United States of America. So, um, and also we're going to continue to uh, expose Saul from Tarsus, the self proclaimed Apostle Paul, being a liar and a murderer. And we're going to continue to expose the criminal street organizations that don't serve God. They are, they are deceived about God and they deceive others about God. We, we read in the Old Testament, we know who the children of Israel are and uh, God's covenant with the children of Israel. And we also, uh, we know that the Jews, they, they came from the Hittites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, and uh, 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 the Gergesites, the Jebusites, the Midianites, you know, all those who didn't want to serve God. That's where the Jew came from. We read in uh, Judges uh, chapter 2, after Joshua died, another generation that didn't know God and the works he had done. And so that generation did evil in the sight of God. And they went out to Balaam, Baal, Peor, and all that. See, that's where the Jew came from. See, the children of Israel not no Jew. The Jew came from all them other nations that the, that the children of Israel supposed they had utterly destroyed and not take wives and not, you know, intermarry with them. So we're going to continue to expose this criminal street order. We're going to the United Nations. We're going to unite. It's going to be criminal and civil charges. And uh, sorority fraternity, it will be anti-gang demonstration, anti-gang protest. Security, first of all, I'm going to stand up for my human rights. Take care of yourself. We should each have one of your very best. And on my next video, we're going to continue. We're going to, we're going to stay with it.